All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, Clay Douglas. And my guest today is John DeNugent. Hello, John. How are you? Oh, just fine. Thank you, uh, Clayton, and I'm honored to have you uh, to, to be back on your show. Uh, down there in Arizona, we're uh, inundated with water, and we've had tornadoes nearby as well. So uh, uh, I guess you're in the right place being down there in, uh, in the arid zone, as the original meaning of Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say so. I would say so. It's a, uh, you know, well, of course, that's why I'm here, so I don't, uh... You just float it away. <laughs> so, well, and, and freeze to death. I mean, it, it was still, it, it's still snowing. It was blizzard condition just a couple of days ago up north. Well, yeah, we have had, I've had the heat on the last few days uh, here. I sleep for my safety because I'm a, I'm a high-profile, uh white civil rights uh, activist and I sleep in a very safe part of the house in the basement surrounded by earth on all sides uh, but it's cold and I've had the heat on uh, for the, it's continued right up until now had it on last night uh, we've had snow until recently 50% uh, more rain than normal and I'm just doing a big blog on my website johndugent.com uh, about explaining the power of the tornadoes we've had uh, here in the eastern half of the United States uh, of Category 5, 200 miles an hour, 350 dead, in uh, mostly in Alabama, which has never had basically hurricanes before. Uh, and you had in Oklahoma and places like that, but uh, not in the Deep South. And I've, I've lived in the Deep South, and that this is, I think it's HARP. I think it's HARP that is happening, and they are doing practice killings. Uh, with HARP right now, I think that the uh, that the J team it was also behind the uh, Fukushima nuclear reactor cook-off using HARP to create that tidal wave, uh, knowing, of course, that uh, the that those five reactors, and I think it's the stupidest thing the Japanese could have done, five reactors right on the edge of the water. <laughs> so those tsunamis went right through those reactors and uh, scrambled them. And uh, we are getting radioactivity, of course, here in the United States now from this. So uh, I think it's uh, starting off a kind of a heavy note here, but I would say that uh, the Georgia Guidestones plan, they're starting to implement it, uh, mass kill-offs of the human race. I think that's happening now. I think that's the radiation. And, and now, now, what about the, uh, what, what is your opinion on this whole New Madrid fault line? Now, I put that, that was included... <laughs> In, in my film, True Face of FEMA, you know, they, the Colonel John Brinkerhoff was lecturing law enforcement in Albuquerque when FEMA was rolled in to the uh, Homeland Security apparatus. And, and they talked about, we'll need 400,000 well-armed, well-trained, organized, disciplined troops to control the American people in case of an earthquake on the New Madrid fault line. Here we go, here we go. Well... Uh, my my good friend Brendan O'Connell, who is now doing three years in prison in Perth, Australia, for discussing the New World Order and in particular the use of a sinister Israeli corporation, Verint, uh, to eavesdrop on every phone conversation in the world, basically, and gather information about people's personal lives so they can blackmail them, and information about companies so they can be taken over by Israelis. And he's doing three years in prison now. Uh, they're saying he's guilty of racial hatred because he had an argument with two Jews next to a stand of oranges in a supermarket. And Brendan O'Connell is now being three years in prison in Australia, first person ever convicted under the so-called hate speech laws in Australia. And uh, he said to me, uh, because he and I have been friends for years, you know, he's not a white nationalist, he's just an anti-Zionist activist. But he said to me, John, with the strength of your Tea Party and your American traditions of owning guns, and the free speech, uh, and the way Obama's, Obama's going down in flames, he says, the New World Order has probably given up on trying to take away your guns or to try to get hate speech laws. He says, the way they're going to try to conquer and enslave the United States is by creating natural disasters, but the man-made disasters, earthquakes, uh, biological epidemics, uh, 
and famines and gigantic uh, hurricanes and uh, and cyclones or, or tornadoes. He says they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna try to get everybody to scream to the government, dear Obama, please save us from this disaster or that disaster or a nuclear cook-off or something. Three hundred uh, people killed from tornadoes. In, in in these weather weather patterns, and you can see these scalar rings formed uh, in the clouds. Well, you know, I've got I'm just did a blog in French, and I'm putting up some of these pictures in there. Uh, actually, a lot of the Europeans, the French and the Germans, are reporting heavily on this as well. Uh, and of course, what what they noticed, and I truly believe my blog was 100 percent accurate, is that the Gulf oil spill uh, was also sinister, and the, the Gulf oil spill. Was all which happened. By the way, the Gulf oil spill happened on <laughs> Adolf Hitler's birthday, April twentieth of last year. Uh, they like to do things on Hitler's birthday to destroy uh, white people. Uh, and the uh, the Japanese nuclear disaster, the tsunami that hit the Fukushima nuclear reactors, the five reactors, that was on the eleventh of March. We know that the J team loves to do things on dates which are 11 or on the 22. They killed John Kennedy, our last true president who was independent of the Israelis, on 11 22 of 63. Of course, we know it was September 11, 2001, the attack, the, the Pentagon and the World Trade Center. Um, what people also don't know uh, is that um, on September 11 of the year 1941, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was part Jewish on both sides of his family, through both his mother and his father, Sephardic Jewish through the Rosso Campo family, which changed their name to Rosefield or Roosevelt in Dutch after they were expelled from Spain and moved to Holland. And the mother was a Delano. Warren Delano was, was also Sephardic Jewish, and he was a, an opium dealer in China. Uh, but Franklin Delano Roosevelt on September 11, 1941, basically declared war on Germany. He ordered the U.S. Navy to begin depth charging uh, German submarines, which, of course, were hunting for British warships and British merchant ships. So that was an absolute declaration of war by the United States illegally, without the permission of Congress. Once you start depth charging other <laughs> country submarines, you, you've gone to... The, the battle stations with them, uh, and it's, so so many. I I truly believe that the the enemy, uh, they are fixated on the number eleven. That's when they like to kill people. Uh, is on, on the eleventh or the twenty second of any year, and they're fixated with numerology. And uh, I've I've been in contact with a wonderful man, uh, Clayton. Have you ever had uh, Robert Fisher on your radio show? No. Uh, have, have you heard of him at all, Robert Fisher, F-I-S-C-H-E-R? No. Well, he's in the St. Louis, Missouri area, a uh, brilliant fellow, and uh, I met him about five years ago. Uh, he had been a research chemist with the famous DuPont Corporation, and um, then, like so many white males in their 50s, if you look at the cover of today's Newsweek magazine, it, it's got this sarcastic cover called The Beached White Male and it shows like a, a white man in his, like in his 50s in a soaking wet uh, business suit and he's like washed up on the beach, the beached white male and it's saying that, you know, white people are, white males are middle-aged white males, they're, they're finished, you know, they're economically wiped out, the other races are going to take over the economy. So it's a vicious, vicious cover article. But uh, that's in Newsweek. It's on the newsstands now. But anyway, so uh, Robert Fisher was just fired from DuPont and replaced by various, you know, I don't know, Chinese, minorities, Jews, and whatnot, Hindus. Uh, and um, when I knew him, he was just a bank messenger. He would bring papers up to various bank, bank branches. And uh, he told me some stuff that was absolutely mind-blowing. And he proved it to me using Google Earth and other software programs. Every single major member of the Kennedy clan who has been, who has died or been murdered or been assassinated was killed at the exact same moment in sidereal time. Um, 
Sidera in Latin means star. Sidereal time means um, the, the line of the stars. It's not dependent on the movement of the Earth, but it's dependent upon position of the stars. And that's how NASA and the Pentagon, they judge absolute time by position of the stars. And every Kennedy that was killed was killed when uh, the constellation of Scorpio was directly above that Kennedy at that place on the Earth where it happened. And when the Little Dipper, Ursa Minor, or the Little Bear, that constellation was below the horizon. Every Kennedy that was killed from uh, from the Kennedy that was killed in World War II, Joe Jr., uh, the first assassination attempt on John Kennedy uh, in 1961 in Florida, which failed, the successful murdering of John Kennedy in 63, the murder of Robert Kennedy in 68, uh, the attempted murder of Ted Kennedy in 64 in a plane crash in New England, where the other people did die in the plane. And he, his back was broken, Ted Kennedy. Uh, the murder of John John, once he'd become, of course, an investigative journalist with his magazine, George, then he sealed his own doom by it. Because once you've got an investigative magazine, I think the J team figured, hey, uh, I would kind of like to investigate who murdered my father. <laughs> and uh, so then his plane was uh, went down. Uh, so these people are obsessed with numerology and killing people at, when there's certain lineup of astrology and certain lineup of the numbers. It's all black magic. And what he also showed me, if I can continue on my uh, monologue with your permission, Clay, of course. Is, uh, uh, he also showed me, using Google Earth, uh, that there is a straight line, a so-called ley line. It's like a, an invisible power line, like vibrations in the Earth's crust. And there's some sort of ley line, and it runs directly from the 33rd degree Masonic Temple on 16th Street in Washington, D.C., due north of the White House. And from this 33rd degree Scottish Rite, Masonic Temple. There's a straight line, and it runs northeast, straight up over the Statue of Liberty, which is full of Masonic symbols, and then it runs right over the center of the roof of the New York Federal Reserve Headquarters, which is by far the most important branch of the Federal Reserve, the New York branch. And then it runs straight over the center of the roof of the Skull and Bones building on the campus of Yale University. And then it runs right, of course, it crosses over the Atlantic Ocean, this same straight line. And it goes over some ancient pagan sites in Cornwall in England. It goes through area of Switzerland, and it goes then straight into Jerusalem. Straight line. Bam. And uh, then he showed me some other stuff, that there there is a specific death angle, you know, like at 360 degrees, you know, in a circle, and there's a specific death angle which this, the, these Jews like to use. Cause they, they, they figure they'll get away with these mass murders or these major assassinations better if they do it when the place of death is on an angle to some other black magic sacred location they have. It's, 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 a, it's a crazy mindset. I'm just saying this is what his evidence shows that this is what they believe in and they do their assassinations and their mega deaths on these angles because they believe in this stuff and um, there, no. there is this death angle going off the roof of the Federal Reserve the roof of the Federal Reserve the New York Fed branch and this death angle runs right up to the World Trade Center and he showed me also how there is this death angle going off uh, the USS Maine monument in Arlington National Cemetery for the hundreds of Americans who were killed when suddenly the USS Maine blew up in 1898 in Havana Harbor in uh, Cuba. And uh, this, uh, this is the, and it runs right off the 33rd degree Masonic Memorial, the George Washington National Masonic Memorial in Alexandria, Virginia. And this same death angle runs straight over to the USS Maine Memorial in 
what that is their way of stating that we blew up the USS Maine to start the United States on this path of imperialism and declaring war on Spain and conquering the Philippines and the whole imperial interference of the United States government in the affairs of the rest of the world conquering countries which had not attacked us now, now let me let you, you commented you made a comment to me about the royal wedding and and how the royal family looks Jewish now I, I have revealed on my show that the Saudi royal family is descended from Jewish traders yeah uh, is there a link the, there uh, pardon me is there a link there somehow? And, and what about this royal wedding? Are oh you saying? God, are you saying? Are you saying? <laughs> are you saying <laughs> so you said the word link in that sense of the link. Uh, well, I mean, what the what the J team, the Jews have, have have long understood is you need to infiltrate power centers. If the nobility is a power center or a wealth center, then has prestige, and you get the common people to you know Americans are even <laughs> ridiculously fascinated by the British royal family. And if you look, it's, it's on, on, on my website from about five, six days ago, the royal wedding at johndenugent.com, and you look at the close-up of the photos. I just, I was at the Walmart, and they had this big picture book about the royal wedding, and they had a picture of Prince William and this Princess Kate on there. And I picked it up. It was expensive. It was 10 bucks. Uh, but they figure some Americans want to buy it. They're fascinated by the British royals, even though we're supposed to be an independent country from England. And uh, sure enough, there were pictures in there, close-ups of him uh, as a pilot in the Royal Air Force, uh, a helicopter pilot, because he's in the military. And boy, look at that nose. Just look at that nose in close-up. And then they showed pictures of him as a little kid. And guess his hair was kind of blondish. Um... Uh, you know, because most Jews have dark hair, but uh, that nose and the face is just like a little Jewish boy. And as he got older, his nose got more hooked and more curved, and the cheekbones and everything. And then in my blog, what I also show uh, is uh, several things. One, it's absolutely admitted on British websites that um, Kate Middleton, who has no royal blood, it's the first time in 350 years that a future British queen has no blue blood at all, no noble blood. Uh, but uh, her mother's maiden name is Goldsmith. And people say, well, that could be Eng an English name. Well, the website states directly that the great grandfather was Jewish. He was a Jew. You know, Goldschmidt in German or in Yiddish is absolutely Jewish. And uh, then I also have on my blog pictures of Kate Middleton's sister. Absolutely looks like an Eastern European Jewess, because we know that the Khazars, as I know you've covered, Clay, uh, the Khazars were a tribe of Turks with some Mongol blood added that converted to, is to Judaism around 700 A.D. And it increased the number of Jews in the world by ten times. So 90% of the Jews in the world are descended from these Khazar Turks, Mongolian Turks, and not descended from the Sephardic Jews, who were Mediterranean and Middle Eastern looking. And you look at the cheekbones on the sister of Kate Middleton, the big, wide Asiatic cheekbones. Not Sometimes white people have a little sort of a slash of a cheekbone on the side, but this is a big, wide plate of a cheekbone, a Mongol cheekbone. And then... I also run a picture up in the balcony at Windsor Palace. On the left, you've got this sister again, Pippa Middleton. In the center, you've got Prince Harry, who's very, very British and Aryan-looking, with tall, broad shoulders and very light brown, reddish hair. And then on the right, you've got the brother of the new princess, the Prince of Cambridge, and his name is James Middleton. And you just look at that mugshot of that brother. He looks like a same kind of Bolsheviks with leather jackets that used to round up the white Christian people of Russia and throw them in the gulag or torture them to death. It is the most sinister Jewish face I have ever seen in my life with this evil glint in his eyes and this smirk as he's looking at the crowd. Absolute Jewish. Uh, Kate Middleton is Jewish. 
In fact, they admitted, it's right in my blog, that in a secret ceremony just a few weeks before the, the wedding, she was inducted into the Church of England. Well, she's like 24, 25 years old, and she waits until a week before the wedding to join the Church of England. What was her religion before that? So, I mean, this is absolute. I think I've proven it, and I've gotten huge viewership on my website now yeah. from British uh, white civil rights activists uh, who were just shocked by these revelations. That both Prince William, just look at the nose, and um, and of course Prince Charles, the, the Prince of Wales. You mean the, uh, yeah, wait, uh, yeah, you, you mean the one that wants to come back after he dies, wants to come back as a virus? <laughs> Is well, that the one? Say, oh, oh, well, I think <laughs> oh, oh, well, and, and on a cell phone call with Camilla, Prince Charles said that uh, he, oh my God, he said that he wished he could be a tampon so he could always be inside her. I mean, that is just such, when I read that, I mean, first of all, I felt sorry for the guy that these British tabloids would, you know, do transcripts of his private cell phone conversation, so it's outrageous. But I myself would never make such a sicko sexual remark I wish I could be a tampon so I could be inside you all the time it's just it, that's the kind of sicko Jewish humor that is beyond me uh, and Prince Charles in 1947 whenever he was born he was circumcised in a Jewish ritual by the Grand Rabbi of, uh, of, Lo of London and if, if you looked at Prince Charles and didn't know he, that he was the Prince of Wales and somebody said, well, this is one of the Rothschilds, uh, you know, or this guy's last name is Goldberg or Madoff or Bernanke or something or Greenspan. You would just say, yeah, yeah, he looks Jewish. You would say Prince Charles looks Jewish, looking at him. Uh, so I think that the British royal family, and as Hilaire Belloc said a long time ago, the British aristocracy has been completely penetrated by Jews. And what happens is this. Uh, a, a degenerate aristocrat gambles away his money, drinks away his money, whores away his money, inherited from his daddy, and rather than work for a living, <clears throat> the deal is this. Uh, he marries, or his father arranges this, uh, he marries a rich Jewess, young Jewess, and then the father of the bride pays all the debts of the English aristocrat. And that is how the Jews have gotten their blood all throughout the British aristocracy, and I believe the British royal family. And the other information that I've read is that the Jews approached the British royal family a long time ago and said, we are going to overthrow every royal family in Europe, and we're going to murder them. Like they chopped off, you know, they killed, uh, uh, the, uh, they decapitated in the 1600s the King of England. They decapitated the king of France. They wiped out the Russian royal family. And he said, we will kill all you people unless you allow Jewish blood into your family. It completely served the interests of, of world Jewry. Uh, and so that's why the British monarchy is still flourishing, because it's, it has a pact with the Jews. All right, let me, let, me, let me share something here. In the story that I just put up on, on uh, Veterans Today, about uh, about the Jerry Kane, the murder of Jerry Kane, and his idiot wife who attacked me for putting the story up just as I told her I would do. Uh, I, at the end of that, I had this tacked on an excerpt from a 1956 speech, George Washington Surrender by Joseph McCarthy. At the turn of the 20th century, there appeared the Schofield Bible with a Jewish interpretation of the prophecies. With wide use of this helpful aid, all the American churches have quietly become synagogues. We now have Baptist Jews, Methodist Jews, Church of Christ Jews, Church of God Jews, Apostate Catholic Jews, and many Protestant Jews throughout America. We are aliens in our own country because of a false religion. All are praying for divine deliverance under that divine government which Cornwallis knew to be the British Empire. Cornwallis said, Your churches will be used to teach the Jews religion, and in less than 200 years, the whole nation will be working for divine world government. That government 
that they believe to be divine will be the British Empire. All religions will be permeated with Judaism without even being noticed by the masses, and they will all be under the invisible, all-seeing eye of the grand architect of Freemasonry. Oh, and, but, and in uh, earlier in 1903, Cyrus Schofield, commissioned by the Rothschild Zionist banking dynasty, Jewish pretending to be Christian, revised the King James Version of the Bible by inserting pro-Zionist notes in the margins between chapters and verses at the bottom of the pages. It was published by Jewish Publishing House, the Oxford Press, under the name the Schofield Reference Bible, which gave Zionist Jews and Zionist Christians the divine right to expel 700,000 Mus 700, Muslims and Christian Palestinians in order to make space for the unwanted Jews in Europe. Yeah, and, and folks, history, we know, is written by the conquerors. There can be no remaining doubt about the Jewish power in the Western world today. Jewish leaders are scriptures of histories, and Christians are silent and cowed, submitting gospels and traditions to Jewish scissors as if they mean nothing. Yep, 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 exactly, exactly. Well, uh, I think that the real issue here is that a lot of people aren't really Christian. They don't believe in God. Uh, God is an interesting theory to them, but they show by such incredible irresponsibility uh, and cowardice that they don't fear God. I mean, I mean, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. These people don't fear God. They don't fear to be the most yellow-bellied cowards. They don't fear being irresponsible. They don't fear committing treason. Or, as uh, James Von Brunn said in his book, uh, before he did that foolish thing at the Holocaust Museum two years ago, but he was right about this, misprision of treason. If you know treason is happening and you do not report it or oppose it, you are guilty of a felony yourself. And a large percentage of the American people, I mean, just look at these uh, polls. Uh, Alex Jones had some poll, it was reported to me, 70% of the American people believe the U.S. government was behind 9-11. 70%. Well, what action are they taking then if they believe the U.S. government massacred 3,000 Americans? Uh, people are tolerating treason. People know treason is happening, and they're tolerating treason. That is a felony. If you know your government has been taken over, you must act to overthrow an illegal, unconstitutional, revolutionary regime, a regime of, of, which is waging terror and war against the American people. If you know that the U.S. government has been completely subverted and infiltrated and taken over by a dark power, a hidden hand, it is a felony to not oppose it. Uh, and because people don't really believe in God, they don't believe in an afterlife. They don't believe life has any meaning except to fornicate and defecate. Uh, I don't think most Christians are Christian. I don't think they believe in anything at all. They just want to continue their animal existence. And all they're saying to the Jewish tiger is, please, please, if I say nothing, will you agree to eat me last? <laughs> all is happening. So I think we need a, a true religious revival in this country, go back to true Christianity and the true belief in God. Uh, you know, one of, in, in my movement that I'm about to launch finally, now that I have a big staff here, I've got four people on my staff um, here in this house, north of Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania, I, I talk about, I believe, the real strong case that can be made for palingenesis, for the ancient Aryan belief in reincarnation. I believe Many of us have more than one life. It's certainly a possibility. And a lot of people find it makes an awful lot of sense because they, they realize even as little kids they came into this world with very strong likes and dislikes. And that's what remains from previous lives is, is we feel a strong impulsion towards something and other things are, we feel a repulsion for other things. Uh, I, and it was a little kid. Um, I, even though I have almost no German ancestry, unlike you, Clay, I have almost no German blood. Uh, but I was fascinated by Germany, even at the age of four and five. And um, I was at uh, my grandmother's and grandfather's place, and they were pure English uh, in New England, in Rhode Island. And there was a little framed stamp. It was just a standard German stamp.
escape to the Third Reich had just showed Adolf Hitler he was the head of state, just like other things will show the Queen or George Washington stamps of, you know, the leader of the country. And uh, I stared at it for like 15 minutes. And I 